Nearly all the substances in our world are held together by chemical bonds. For example, water is held together by a chemical bond. So what is a chemical bond? Well, a chemical bond is a mutual electrical attraction between the nuclei and the valence electrons of different atoms that binds the atoms together. Let's go over the different types of chemical bonds. An ionic bond is a bond between cations and anions. Cations are positively charged atoms, while anions are negatively charged. You can tell if a bond between two atoms will be an ionic bond depending on the difference in electronegativity between the atoms. An atom's electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons from another atom. If the difference is greater than 1.7, then it's an ionic bond. In ionic bonds, atoms completely give up electrons to other atoms. An example of an ionic bond is lithium fluoride. In this bond, the lithium atom gives up its only valence electron to the fluoride atom. Another type of chemical bonds are covalent bonds. In a covalent bond, the electrons are shared in pairs between the atoms being bonded together. There are two types of covalent bonds, polar covalent and nonpolar covalent. A polar covalent bond occurs when the difference in electronegativity between the bonded atoms is less than 1.7 but greater than 0.3. In a polar covalent bond, the bonded atoms have an unequal attraction for the shared electrons. An example of this type of covalent bond would be a bond between a hydrogen atom and an oxygen atom. As you can see, there is an uneven attraction for the shared electrons. In a nonpolar covalent bond, the bonded electrons are shared equally by the bonded atoms, which results in a balance of charge. These bonds occur when the difference in electronegativity is less than 0.3. An example of a nonpolar covalent bond would be an oxygen atom bonded to another oxygen atom. Here the resultant electronegativity is zero, and the atoms equally share their bonded electrons. One key aspect of covalent bonding is the octet rule. Essentially, the octet rule states that chemical compounds form so that each atom in the bond has an octet of electrons in its highest energy level. Atoms do this so they can achieve stability that normally only a noble gas possesses by filling their outer s and p orbitals. Now there are exceptions to this rule. For example, boron has three valence electrons so it tends to bond with other atoms in a way so it's surrounded by six electrons instead of eight. An example would, of this would be boron trifluoride. Chemical bonds can be represented by using Lewis structures. Lewis structures use the electron dot notation to represent the chemical bonds. In electron dot notation, dots representing valence electrons are placed around the atom symbol. Dots can be paired up if there are more than four valence electrons. These pairs are called lone pairs. In a Lewis structure representing a chemical bond between atoms, an atom's valence electrons that are not in lone pairs are paired up with the other atom's non-lone pair electrons. Sometimes there are multiple bonds between two atoms, and so more than one pair is shown in the Lewis structure. Metallic bonding is unsurprisingly the bonds between metals. A key aspect of metallic bonding is the sea of electrons. Because the electrons are delocalized in metals, they move freely among empty atomic orbitals. This sea of electrons is why metals have many of their properties. These properties include the ability to conduct electricity, malleability, ductility, as well as other properties. A molecule's molecular geometry is the three-dimensional arrangement of a molecule's atoms in space. These geometries can be explained through the VESPER theory. VESPER is an acronym that stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. The theory states that repulsion between the sets of valence electrons surrounding an atom causes these sets to be oriented as far apart as possible. Essentially, a bond's molecular shape can be determined based on the number of lone pairs and atoms bonded to the central atom.